Good morning, West Mitchell. How are you doing this beautiful morning? It's great to be with you yet once again. I thank your pastor in her absence, the Reverend Dr. Lisa Allen Warren, for allowing me to preach from her pulpit. And I thank you for allowing me to preach before you. I have already read the text, which was Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. I will now say a brief prayer. Please bow your heads with me. Thank you, God, for this moment in time in which you have blessed us with. Thank you for bringing us through our yesterdays, God. Thank you for your presence in this place that we feel in this place, God. We pray that you will open up our hearts and our minds unto you, God. That you will empower us through this word. That you will liberate us through this word. That you will heal and deliver us through this word, God. That we will leave this place as transformed beings, God, ready to do your perfect will. It is in your most precious name. title today is A Challenge to Refocus. Again, the title of today's message is A Challenge to Refocus. Oftentimes, I see on social media or hear from ministry leaders that we need to focus on one thing at a time. However, the concept of focusing on one thing at a time appears countercultural to our fast-paced society that seems to value multitasking and quantity over thoroughness and quality. And that seems to prefer quoting quotes than reading books. I certainly understand the purpose of focusing on one thing at a time. However, I have loosely been involved in two fields for approximately 10 years. If I had chosen between my career and ordained ministry, I would not be standing behind the sacred desk in your presence. Instead, I would have likely transitioned from working at a group practice to starting my own practice. On the other hand, I think that I would be content with being actively engaged in ordained ministry if I had waited to accept my call after I retired from my current field. Several years ago, I wrote poetry regarding my conflict. Below are excerpts from poems entitled Crisis and Vivalence. When I am with ministers, I feel like a psychologist because I know that my voice is needed when it comes to mental health in the church. I often contemplate about how I can merge psychology, spirituality, theology, and Christianity together to make a bigger impact in this world. I often thought that I'd be much better off if I could just perform spoken word poetry and bend it beyond the four walls of the church house and incorporate Christian counseling into my specialties as a licensed psychologist. My need to focus is ever before me. Am I the only one in here who needs to focus? And the biblical story recorded in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 and 42, we have two sisters who opened their home to Jesus. Martha greeted Jesus and scurried around the house, cleaning and preparing for their meal. Mary, on the other hand, was in awe of Jesus. She couldn't keep her eyes off of him because she was intrigued by his charisma and wisdom. Martha became overwhelmed and frustrated because she was working hard and her sister was just sitting there with Jesus. Somehow, Martha thought that her sister owed her something and needed to emulate her. Have you ever been frustrated with persons didn't seem to follow your program? Then you understand Martha's perspective. Mary was unbothered by Martha. She saw her on a regular basis because they were sisters and lived together. Mary was focused on the here and now with their visitor. She understood the importance of presence. She took the opportunity to just be. Can you relate to Mary? Have you ever been minding your own business when someone got upset with you for not falling in place? Then you understand Mary's perspective. Martha mumbled under her breath, walked near Mary and Jesus and paused and grimaced at Mary in hopes that Mary would see her and volunteer to help her. Martha was sweating and getting out of breath. She was so incensed with Mary and her circumstances that she could not keep her anger to herself. Therefore, she interrupted their interaction with her tirade. Martha's jealousy, frustration, and skewed piety got the best of her. She was intent on demoralizing Mary in front of Jesus. However, 
Jesus turned her angst around on her. He projected Martha's self-righteous anger onto herself. He challenged her to see that Mary was the model of how to treat a house guest. In fact, she was a sister who had chosen the most appropriate way to spend time with him. Martha, on the other hand, was the source of her own anxiety and frustration. If she had just paused, took a deep breath, and sat down with Jesus and Mary, she would have discovered on her own that she had chosen the wrong thing to focus on, and that she was the only one in the home who was experiencing emotional distress. Can you relate to Martha? Have you ever been the source of your own stress and angst? If you are a taskmaster, you're probably like Martha. If anyone has ever called you bossy or a busybody, you're probably like Martha. If you are usually the one who delegates responsibilities, you're probably like Martha. If you're usually cool, calm, and collective, you're probably like Mary. If you tend to go with the flow, you're probably like Mary. If you come to church to worship God and communion with, communion with God's creation, you're probably like Mary. If you saw yourself in Martha, then you are beginning to understand that refocusing will reduce your unnecessary stress. If you saw yourself in Mary, then you have learned the value of focusing through your past experiences. Just prior to our chosen narrative, in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37, Jesus told the lawyer the parable of the Good Samaritan. After the lawyer asked him about the identity of his neighbor. In his story, Jesus revealed that after a man was beaten by robbers and left for dead, a priest and a Levite drove past him without helping. However, a Samaritan stopped and helped him. Jesus declared that the man who had been beaten was the lawyer's neighbor. And that the lawyer was to treat his neighbors in the same manner as the Samaritan had treated the beaten man. The story of Martha and Mary reminds us of our need to refocus as Christians. Oftentimes, we find ourselves as Christians within a Christian Methodist Episcopal Church having meetings after meetings, connectionally and locally, with minimal transformation within us, minimal change in our ministries, and minimal improvement in our relationships with each other, persons within our surrounding communities, and with God. Martha reminds us that although we may be well-intentioned, our frustrations, anxiety, and angst reveal, reveal to us that we need to reflect, regroup, and refocus on our Christian lifestyles. Mary reminds us that we need to return our focus on God. Once we refocus on God, God will reveal to us who we are. Once we allow ourselves to experience God's presence in our lives, we will focus on God. Our focusing on God will reveal to us who we are and what God is calling us to. Below are more poems or more excerpts from our poems, Crisis and Ambivalence. Therefore, at this moment, after being alone with God and my thoughts, I can say with confidence that I am who God says that I am. I am here stronger and convicted into being and doing the ministry that God created me for. I'm ready to follow God's lead and trust the Spirit within me. If you've ever talked to other Christians or read social media comments about controversial issues, you may have discerned that not all Christians have the same values. Fundamentalist or evangelistic Christians tend to be more conservative. Whereas Christians who follow the biblical, assertive, and radical Jesus tend to be more liberal. Fundamentalists and evangelistic Christians are the very Christians who use religion to colonize Africans and to make slaves docile. They are the ones who use the Bible to justify slavery and continue to use the Bible to oppress groups of people, including women. Don't be fooled. Fundamentalists, evangelistic, and conservative Christians are also clothed in black skin. There is no wonder why fundament, fundamentalists and liberal Christians tend to argue that Christians should not focus on politics.
politics and isms such as racism, sexism, heterosexism, classism, or engaging debates regarding controversial issues. There is no wonder that they tend to focus on sexual orientation, which divides the black church, to distract African American Christians from the current isms and sins of America, such as toxic water in Flint, Michigan, ongoing police brutality, domestic terrorism by white persons against black bodies. More liberal Christians recall and follow Jesus' mission statement found in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has appointed me, anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release of the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind and to let the press go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. If you've lost focus, you're not alone. We all need to refocus on God due to the busyness and chaos of life. If you've lost focus, all you need to do is follow Mary's model of worship and meditation. Mary's model demonstrates our need to set some time each week to disconnect from our cell phones, tablets, laptops, televisions, family, and friends, and sit still or lay still. Focus on the presence of breath within our bodies and listen to that which is revealed to us. Mary's model also guides us to pray to God, worship God, and to journal so that we may respond to Jesus' challenge to refocus. If we answer Jesus' challenge to refocus, we will minimize church meetings and maximize church ministries, abandon competition for collaboration, Bible reading for biblical literacy, elitism for community, Bible quoting for authentic communication, and brown nosing for worshiping. If we respond affirmatively to Jesus' challenge to refocus, we will research and read our own history versus solely relying on what we were spoon-fed in school. We will focus on meeting the needs of black communities versus only meeting our own needs. We will become a church for the surrounding community versus remaining a church in the hood. If we answer Jesus' challenge to be focused, we will adopt Jesus' mission statement to bring good news to the poor. Proclaim and demand the release of all persons held in captivity. Prompt awareness to persons blinded by individualism and prosperity from the academics, crises, and evil in America. And proclaim or participate in the liberation to all of the oppressed. Today, we have been challenged by God and Jesus to refocus. Are you ready to refocus on God and what God is calling you to do so that you may be truly Christian in and out of this place. Yeah. I now open the doors open to Christian discipleship.